close my heart. When you think about how heaven's rejoicing right now just because of the fact that God showed up home and we come the opportunity to be able to bless his name just in the song. Thank you, Manny. Uh, again, good to have Sid, Kedrick, and Tanya. I miss that. They used to sing all the time for me and just be singing. They just sing. And so somebody like me that's toned up and hears somebody sing, it sounds so good. So we're grateful. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, he's a good God. Yeah. I try to get Talitha to preach this morning. She wasn't quite ready this time around. In the future, maybe. Who knows? God will do it. Yeah. Matthew chapter 5. Let's go to something we've been talking about all season long. It started even back before Thanksgiving. The theme, the mindset, the thing that God keeps dropping on us is being a light. So Matthew chapter 5, I'm going to start about verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, I'm going to start at verse 14. It's on the screen now, so we're grateful. Let's start. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do man light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Thank you again, Father, for being the light of the world, for letting that light ignite us and put us in the right position to hear your voice in a better way. Thank you, Father, for allowing your spirit to be here with us today. And I thank you for changing hearts and minds and souls. Get me out of the way and let your spirit speak. And you speak the words to your people that we need to hear. We're going to give you our glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, this whole thing about this whole light thing, the transformation of light. We talked about the speed of light last week. We talked about light in everything that we do. So he asked us to be the light of the world. So how do we do that? I know what we should do, but how do we do that? So I have to ask myself these questions. Sometimes I ask, ask them to God. You tell us to do something, but how do we do it? Because we get in our own mind how things need to be done, and that's when we start getting in trouble. We start... Figuring out how things should sway or how things should go. And we start figuring out things more in God. That's how things get in trouble. So how am I the best light? How can I be the best light? Well, the first thing and most important thing is you've got to be lit. This one's not going to be with a bunch of trees and sticks rubbing together. You can tell me all Boy Scouts, what I just see on TV. We're not going to do a bunch of sticks. We're not going to have any lighter or any kerosene. This light can only be lit from the inside. Amazing. Really nothing we can do about it. But the light needs to touch us. And once that light touches us, it begins to ignite us from the inside. We read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from about verse 3, it has to start with the Holy Spirit. He's the one that touches our heart. Without him, we can't even say Jesus Christ is Lord. Amazing. So he begins to move on the inside of us and begins to ignite us in such a way that we now see something burning on the inside. Something's moving now. Something's lit now. And there's been some kind of takeoff. It took me about a good five minutes to light that gas fireplace yesterday. Most of the time I kind of leave it alone because I get aggravated and have to hold my finger in one spot. But once a year, the first time every year, you have to get that igniter going, get all that dust and stuff out of it. I thought I was going to leave it on all summer, but a little bit of flame goes, and it really caused the gas bill to go kind of high. So I just turn it off. But nevertheless, it takes a while to get that thing ignited. Yeah. I don't know why God has to take so long to get us ignited. Yeah. Uh, I shouldn't say that. We're already lit. It takes us a while to burn. That's where we go. Yeah. It takes us a while to burn. Yeah. And so you ask the question, why does it take so long to burn? I wish I had the answer to that. We're all being in a better place. And we all know we're getting closer to God a whole lot quicker. But we don't always have the answer why it takes a while to burn. But it takes a while to burn at times. Yeah. I guess we find ourselves trying to keep it lit ourselves. And this light has to be lit internally. It has to be lit inside of us. And it has to be a perpetual light that we can't really do anything about. Except put our faith and our trust in God. And allow Him to keep that thing going on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We talked last week a little bit about how it was silent for 400 years between the Malachi and the Old Testament and between the New Testament. God didn't say a word to anybody. But he took upon himself to finally speak to Zacharias, the priest. The scripture says that his family had good works. And because they had good works, God blessed them. I mean, i got an amen corner downstairs. 
Yeah, yeah, it's not like it. No, I met some Lord. Nevertheless, no, though, after all these many years, God finally started to start to speak. And he spoke to the priest, Zach, uh, Zacharias. To the degree that it scared them, he couldn't speak for a while for the child was born. And when the child was born, they said, we're going to name him after you. He said, no, I was supposed to name him John. John means to be the beloved. John is the forerunner of Christ. Jesus' mom and uh, John the Baptist's mom, Elizabeth, were first cousins. She got pregnant, and six months later, God began to appear unto a wonderful Mary and said, I've chosen you to carry my son. I've chosen you to be the vessel on which the light shines. I've chosen you to let Christ be born inside of you. I still think it's awesome, right? But if you slow down a little bit, think about it a little bit. Then he chose all of us to choose all of us to let Christ be born inside of us. Amen. I'm talking about when he comes alive and that light first shines, are we not giving birth to Christ? Are we not taking care of a baby inside of us? Are we not maturing this life inside of us? Yeah. Trying to get this life of Christ to grow so we disappear and he takes over? Amen. The whole mindset is when he lights it inside of us, a whole mindset of Christ begins to take over. Yeah. That's why the lifestyle has to be changed in such a way to be able to feed this life that's inside of us. I see it all the time, but if you're really trying to have a baby in, in the natural, I don't think we're going to hit cocaine. But again, some do, but unfortunately, it's, it's a sad option. Amen. We're not going to put things, uh, put this baby in trouble, in jeopardy. But we put this baby of Christ inside of us. It's life that burns inside of us in jeopardy all the time because we find ourselves going and doing things that are not perpetual to the birth of this child. We're doing things that gives us kind of a little bit of gratification and things that makes us feel good about ourselves. But we're not doing things that give God the glory. And because of that, this life is not really growing like it should be. It's kind of uh, aborted, if you will be. It's kind of slowed down because we have not walked into this marvelous life. But nevertheless, let's go back to John the Baptist real quick. We go back to him and his life. And I said, he's going to be a forerunner, one that comes before Christ. In the Old Testament days, in the ancient days, they would call him a town crier. Because he's supposed to distribute the news to everybody that the king is coming. One of the words they call about preachers is a uh, raven long tick. So I can't, I fit that pretty well. You get wild about it. The king is coming! He's coming! Isaiah chapter 60 said that when this whole king is coming, one of the things that we do, we've got to make everything straight. We're going to make the high hills low, and then we're going to make the valleys high. We're going to lift up a standard for a king because the king is coming. John the Baptist said, he's coming, prepare yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, prepare yourself. So he'd go by the Jordan River and he baptized many, 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 many people. Let them know, get ready for the king. Get ready for the coming of the king. Purify your hearts and your mind because the king is coming. They asked John, are you the king? Matthew 3 said, no, I'm not that one. I'm not even worthy to unlatch his shoes. There's one coming after me. He's mightier and more powerful. He's going to baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. Now, growing up in Shawson, I didn't go to church with my mom. My mom, my mom went to church with Cecilia and dad, who was a pastor for a year, and Cecilia and Tanya and the rest of her family. I'd go down there once a month. I went across the street to the church because all my friends that I played ball with, that's where they went. And again, we've got a multicultural church here. I was the only black guy, but we still have a multicultural <laughs> church here. And I didn't realize that I was saying fire wrong. Far. He's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with far. And so being around that, I begin to get in my mindset. So I go to Ohio for two weeks to visit some of my family in Cleveland, Ohio. And I would say something like far. And they left me scorn. So I started talking different and in a better way. So it don't matter today if you say fire or far. It's still the same thing. He's going to baptize you with far. He's going to put something inside you. Amen. And so, John, in John chapter 1, about verse 29, this is what I love so much about John the Baptist. So said, John was preaching and teaching to the disciples, and he saw Jesus walking. And he told his disciples, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. What am I trying to say? If you really preach right, they're going to follow Jesus. Amen. If you're really living right, they're going to follow Jesus. Everything inside of you is going to point to Jesus. Amen. Let everybody know why you're living. Let everybody know why you are the way you are. Let everybody know why the light shines on you. 
Because Jesus is inside of you. I'm pointing everybody to that direction. There he is. The one that takes away the sins of the world. So here comes Jesus on the scene after John is passing away. And, or, he hasn't passed yet. He's in jail. There's about to be him. But Jesus comes on the scene. He starts his ministry. He puts himself in a position now to be that light. He puts himself in a position now to go forth and do some things that nobody's seen before. I'm talking about people that were uh, lame begin to walk and the deaf begin to hear. The blind begin to see. And he even calls some dead folk to come up out the grave. Amen. Nobody has ever seen anybody like this. He even had control of the water as he told the winds and the waves to calm down on a turbulent night in the midst of the sea. He even walked on water. We're talking about Jesus. And this light in him was so strong that when demons came around, they began to cry out. Oh, don't put us in torment yet. Because this light was just too strong. And what he did, because of who he is and because of why he came, he came to die to set us free so we can be a part of God. Because of this great work that he did, he started a fire on the inside. Mm -hmm. And this fire that he started on the inside began to grow more and more and more as we get closer and closer to him. It begins to burn so bright. And to the degree that we are now the light that he talked about. Amen. Not a light to hide. Not a light to put on a bushel. Not a light to put behind a tree. or Not a light to burn out whenever we want it to. But a light to shine in the midst of darkness. So people may know that there's saviors in the world. He come to save and set us free. He come to Amen. deliver us and put us in the right mindset. We're talking about a light that burns perpetually for those of us who put our faith in him. A light that goes on forever and ever and ever. Amen. He's an awesome God. So when you're really trying to walk with God, everything preaches to you. The very first week that we did these Advent candles, I asked the young man to come and light the candle. And I kept that one big candle lighter. I can't really think of a good name for it, but for today, just a big candle lighter. I kept the big candle lighter up there so we can light the other candles. And see, I said, we're spiritual. I should have known this anyway. I hadn't seen it this way. When God will speak to you no matter what. Mm -hmm. If you're already lit... It's easy to light something else. Amen. If we're lit, it's easy to light everybody else. If, if, if our light is burning, it's easy to let somebody else's light burn. Amen. And so then I start laughing within myself and begin to think about candles. You can have one candle lit and the rest of them not be lit. But if you need the other ones lit, all you got to do is touch the one sort of day. Amen. The reason we come to church is we can light each other and keep the fire burning. And once Amen. we're lit, as long as we keep touching each other, we're going to stay lit with God. This whole thing of being light of the world is when we talk together as a group of family, as a group of believers, then the light shines bright to the whole world. Amen. So what do we need to do? We always need to touch somebody so that light can always stay lit. Amen. We always need to be in contact with somebody that believes like us. Amen. So even when that light burns out, even when life gets hard, even when we begin to get trouble in some of our issues and some of our spirits begin to get low, as long as we can touch another light, we can always be lit. Amen. Because the eternal light on the inside that God already lit will always shine. All we need to do is keep our light lit. Because as long as our light is lit, we're going to light somebody else's light. And as long as somebody else's light is lit, the Christian light will never go down. We will always shine. So, again, this particular time period, let your light so shine before man, they may see your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine on the hill. Not hide it. But it needs to be lit now more than ever before. Because all the people in the world... We still have a small percentage of people that are truly believing in God. I'm not talking about go by the name. I'm talking about truly believing in God. So therefore, it's about what we do now. That might show the light to somebody that's not even known. Or might start somebody's light back up that's been burned out. Or might cause someone to burn that much brighter when all things have just kind of went sideways with them. We've got to keep this light lit by staying connected to our Lord and be strong in Him in the name of Jesus. Yes. We serve a mighty good God. Yes. Amen. Father, we give you all glory, praise, and honor. We thank you again. Thank you, Father, that you've got a perpetual light that keeps us lit. And as long as your light keeps us lit, we'll always shine. I thank you, Father, for the oil of the Holy Ghost being that thing that keeps the thing burning. But I pray, Father, that we take time out as this light is illuminated. We look at ourselves and begin to cleanse ourselves from those things that have been hindering us, from those baggage that we've been carrying from the bitterness sometimes that comes up and flows in our heart, from the frustration that we get sometimes when things are not going the way we want it to go. We thank you already in advance, Lord, for allowing our light to be lit. Light every light here today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Cause the burdens to be released. Cause the hardship to take away. 
be taken away. Cause that downtrodden spirit to be lifted up, Father, because we got a perpetual light that keeps burning, and the light is you, the light of the world. I ask you, Father, to continue to light our faith and allow our faith to touch your faith that we can do great things in your sight. And we believe without a shadow of a doubt that you not only came to us, but you died for us, and most important, that you rose again. We rejoice in the fact that we know you today because we believe in you to do great works in the midst of our lives. Speak to us, Father, and and let us be everything that you have us to be in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, praise, and honor. Still, we every head bowed, every eye closed. We ask you to look in on yourself at the moment and think about that a little bit. Have we allowed something to extinguish our light? Have we allowed something that's just kind of hindered us at times that we're concentrating more on the problem than we are on the answer? Have we put ourselves in a position that all the darkness that hell tried to bring against us it's called us to stop and slow down. We're talking to Christians first. If you're a Christian that you're just down and you're troubled and you're burdened, let's get your hands up and let's pray together and we ask God to come relight us. We need to be relit sometime. We'll be relit in the name of Jesus. Thank you for relighting me, Father. Thank you, Father, for relighting me. Thank you. We see that. We see that. Ask for your power and your hand, your spirit to be strung up on us, Father, and relight us all over again. Allow us to think about who you are and what you've done. And speak to us, Father, and let your spirit just move all over us and bring us in another light. Call us to have a light, Father, in our heart and to see the darkness that so many others are in. And understand it's greater and better before. We need to shine so they might be able to see you in us. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There might be someone here that's never, ever confessed that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. What's the feeling of talking to you today? I'm trying to light that light on the inside of you. If you never, ever make that confession, give me any kind of sign. Stand to your feet, raise your hand, we'll come down to you. Because the light of the glory of heaven came all the way down from heaven to get to us. And he's still trying to light hearts and minds and faith. He's still trying to acknowledge us and wants us to acknowledge him. Give me any kind of sign of will come to you. Come down.